do I have to spell it out for you? This phrase is used when someone is frustrated or annoyed because they feel the other person isn't understanding something that seems obvious. For example, seriously, do I have to spell it out for you? It's just adding those two numbers together. And that's when I realized I accidentally entered a salsa dancing competition. Can you believe it? Wait, what? <laughs> How did that happen? Well, I thought I was signing up for a pottery class, but turns out it was a mix-up. Do I have to spell it out for you, Mike? Hey, my bad, my bad. I guess I missed that part. Pottery doesn't even sound like salsa, Mike. Come on, keep up. All right, all right, point taken. So, how did the competition go? Do I have to spell it out for you? It was a disaster. I was terrible. But it was so much fun. You should have seen me. Do you follow? When someone says, do you follow? It's a way of checking if you understand or are keeping up with what they're saying. It's like asking, do you get what I'm saying so far? So, Denise, about the party this weekend, you gotta come. I'm in, but I'm not sure how to get there. All right, listen up. You know the new pizza place on Elm Street, right? Cool. So, you're gonna head down Elm Street, past the pizza place, and take a left on Maple Avenue. Then, keep straight until you see the park on your right. That's where you turn left onto Pine Street. The house is the third one on the right. Do you follow? Got it! Elm Street, left on Maple, right turn at the park onto Pine, and third house on the right. Easy peasy. Yes! Can't wait to see you there! It's gonna be so much fun! Thanks for the detailed directions, Mia. I'll definitely find my way now. So to speak. We use the phrase so to speak to indicate that what we're saying should be taken as a sort of approximation or metaphorical statement. For example, she was a shining star on the stage, so to speak. So I was telling Sarah about my newfound love for cooking, right? And she asked me if I ever burned anything. I told her, well, I did set off the smoke alarm once when I made grilled cheese. And, um, let's just say things got a little toasty, so to speak. Classic Jake move, right? At least you didn't set the kitchen on fire. <laughs> exactly. I like to keep it exciting, you know? Ah, the culinary adventures of Jake never disappoint. Hey. Variety is the spice of life, so to speak. Well, here's to many more kitchen adventures to come. I don't buy it. The phrase, I don't buy it, is a colloquial way of saying that someone is in disbelief or does not accept something that has been told or shown to them. All right, Jack, what's your excuse this time for not doing your assignment? Uh, well, Mr. Jenkins, I had a family emergency last night. It was really serious. Oh, come on, Jack. A family emergency again? I don't buy it. You've used the family emergency excuse one too many times. You need a new playbook. Next time, save the creativity for your homework, okay? I'm sorry, Mr. Jenkins. I promise to finish the assignment by tomorrow. You'd better do so, Jack. It's the last chance I give you. Fancy a drink? The phrase, fancy a drink, is often used as a casual way to see if someone wants to go get a drink with you, whether it's coffee, tea, 
or something else. Hey, James, it's been ages since we hung out. How have you been? I know, Dylan. I've been good, just really busy. How about you? Same here. Work has been hectic. I could really use a break. How about we grab a drink tonight? Fancy a drink at our old spot? That sounds perfect. I could definitely use a refreshing drink and some good company. Great. It'll be nice to catch up over a cold drink. Let's say around seven? Sounds good to me. See you at seven then. Could I have a word? When someone asks if they could have a word with you, it usually means they want to talk to you privately about something. Hey, John, could I have a word? Yeah, sure. What's up? I just wanted to talk about something that's been on my mind. I'm not really content with your recent performance within our team. Oh, really? I wasn't aware of that. Can you be more specific? Well, I've noticed that your communication with others has been lacking. And it's impacting our overall efficiency, you know? I see your point. I'll definitely work on improving that. I appreciate you bringing it to my attention. Great. I'm glad you're taking it well. We're all in this together, and I know you can step up your game. Thanks for being upfront with me, Steve. I'll make sure to do better. Perfect. I know you've got what it takes. Thanks for being open to feedback. Never a dull moment. Never a dull moment is a common expression we use to describe a situation that is always interesting or exciting. It means that there is always something happening and it's never boring. Phew, what a day. It was non-stop. Yeah, I feel like I haven't sat down all day. Never a dull moment around here, right? Absolutely. That project deadline really had us on our toes. And don't even get me started on the unexpected client meeting. Oh, that was a roller coaster. But you gotta admit, it keeps things interesting. Definitely. I'd take a busy day over a slow one any time. Well, here's to another day of never-ending excitement. Cheers to that. Never a dull moment indeed. Come to think of it, this phrase is used to introduce a new idea or something that one has just realized that is relevant to the topic at hand. For example, if someone were discussing plans for a party and suddenly remembers they have a friend who is a great DJ, they might say, Come to think of it, Tom could DJ for us at the party. Hey, Jennifer, did you catch the game last night? Yeah, it was crazy. I can't believe they came back in the last minute. I know, right? It was intense. Come to think of it, we should organize a watching party for the next game. That's a great idea. We can order some pizza and make a night of it. Definitely. It'll be a fun way to bond with the team outside of work. For sure. Plus, it's nice to relax and unwind together. Absolutely. Let's spread the word and get everyone on board. The thing is, this is a phrase we use to introduce or emphasize a point in a conversation. It's like saying, here's the main point I want to make. For example, I know you wanted to go to the concert tonight. The thing is, the tickets are all sold out. Hey, Monica, have you heard from Mark lately? Yeah, we caught up for lunch last week. He's doing well, still cracking those awful jokes of his. <laughs> <laughs> Some things never change. The thing is, Mark messaged me the other day saying he wants to plan a weekend hiking trip. 
Would you be interested in joining us? Absolutely. I could definitely use a break from the city. The thing is, I've been wanting to get back into nature. Perfect. We can all use a little adventure. Let's make it happen. Tell me about it. This idiom is a way to show agreement or sympathy with someone's feelings or experiences. It's like saying, I totally relate to that situation. The traffic this morning was a nightmare. Tell me about it. I was stuck on the freeway for an hour. I swear, I aged five years just sitting in my car. I hear you. My back is killing me from all that stop-and-go nonsense. I think I might invest in a helicopter, anything to avoid that mess. If only we could teleport to work, that would be the dream. Tell me about it. Anything would be better than dealing with that traffic every day. Well, here's to surviving another commute. Cheers to that! I'm praying for lighter traffic tomorrow. A bit much. A bit much is a casual way to express when something is just a little too extra. Imagine someone is constantly bragging about how amazing they are at everything they do. You might say, wow, their ego is really a bit much. Hey, what do you think about Miss Johnson? Well, she's definitely something. Right? She can be a bit much sometimes. Totally. Like, she's super strict about everything. And she always expects us to know everything already. Yeah, it's like she forgets we're still learning. Exactly. And don't even get me started on our pop quizzes. Ugh, those are the worst. She just springs them on us out of nowhere. I know, right? It's like she enjoys watching us panic. Hey, we'll get through it. She might be a bit much, but we can handle it. For sure. Just gotta keep pushing through. At the end of the day, this idiom is used to emphasize what is most important after everything else has been taken into account. For example, you can say, we had many disagreements during the project, but at the end of the day, we all worked together to achieve success. Hey, Em, any thoughts on what we should do this weekend? Hmm, well, we could go hiking or maybe check out that new restaurant in town. I like the sound of both options. At the end of the day, I just want to spend time with you. That's sweet, Joe. Maybe we can do both. Hike in the morning and grab dinner later. Perfect. We can make a day of it. Enjoying nature and good food. Sounds like a plan. Oh, and we should also finally tackle that pile of laundry. Ugh, I know. Chores have to get done too. True, but let's make sure to balance work and play this weekend. Agreed. At the end of the day, as long as we're together, it doesn't matter what we do. Get on someone's good side. This means to behave in a way that makes someone like you or have a positive opinion of you. For example, if you want the principal to support your project, you should try to get on his good side by being respectful and showing him your dedication. Hey, have you met our new boss yet? Yeah, she seems nice. I heard people saying we should try to get on her good side. Do you have any tips on how to do that? Well, for starters, being on time and going the extra mile with our work can definitely impress her. I heard she values honesty and open communication too. I think if we show her that we're reliable and honest, we'll be in her good books. 
Yes, I'll make sure she sees us as dedicated team players. Absolutely. Let's make sure to keep up the good work and get on her good side. You got me there. You got me there is an expression people use when someone has caught them off guard and they don't have an answer. Let's say someone asks you a tricky riddle and you can't figure it out. You could respond with, wow, you really got me there with that one. Wait, do you remember which way this goes in? Um, I think it's supposed to go the other way. Oh, right. Thanks. We almost had a major problem there. Yeah, that could have been a disaster. Hey, do you think we're getting closer to getting this thing to work? I mean, we're making progress. We just need to figure out the right connection. True. It's like solving a puzzle. Hey, maybe we should try switching the wires around. It might work better. Hmm, you got me there. Let's give it a shot. Yes, we did it. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? You got it. The phrase, you got it, is often used informally to convey that someone has understood or accomplished something successfully. All right, honey, let me break it down for you. Remember how we talked about saving money for that toy you really want? Yeah, but why do I have to wait so long to get it? Because when you wait and save, you'll appreciate it even more. It's all about being responsible with your money and learning the value of patience. I still don't get it, Mom. Think of it like planting a seed. You have to take care of it water it, and wait for it to grow into something beautiful. The longer you wait, the sweeter the fruit will be. Oh, I get it now. It's like the more I save, the better the reward will be in the end. Exactly, sweetie. You got it. I'm so proud of you for understanding. Do you get the picture? This expression is a way of asking someone if they understand the situation or concept that has been explained. For example, I've explained the project details to you several times. Do you get the picture now? As you are all aware, our sales numbers have been declining over the past few months. Why is that happening, Mr. Thompson? Well, there are many factors at play, including increased competition, and changing consumer preferences. We need to come up with a strategy to turn things around. What do you suggest we do? We need to focus on improving our marketing efforts, enhancing our product offerings, and providing better customer service. Our success depends on our ability to adapt and innovate. Do you get the picture? Yes, we understand. Excellent. Together, we can put the company back on the path to success. Let's get to work and make it happen. That's news to me. That's a common expression we use when we're surprised to hear something we didn't know before. For example, did you know that our school is hosting a talent show next week? That's news to me. Hey, Eve, guess what I just found out? Apparently, our gut and brain are in constant communication, influencing each other more than we realize. Isn't that fascinating? That's news to me. I had no idea they were so interconnected. Right? It's amazing how our digestive system can impact our mood and even our cognitive abilities. That explains a lot, actually. Like those times when I feel stressed and it affects my stomach. 
Exactly. It's all linked. I'm really blown away by how much our gut health can impact our overall well-being. Yeah, our bodies are truly incredible. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this.